All right, Talia there, champs, and welcome to the show. Today we're gonna to have a shootout between the eGPU and the Alienware Graphics Amp. Which one's faster? All right, champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom, it's Windows Pro time. Now, it's pretty easy to figure out which one's faster because actually it's no contest. But why? Why is the Alienware Graphics Amp so much faster than the eGPU? Both used by four lanes of PCI Express. So there really shouldn't be that much of a difference and the difference is big. And I will be doing quite a lot of videos on eGPUs, connecting them to, you know, Ultrabooks and stuff like that and see how we go. Even on Macs, I'm going to be testing a lot on Macs with an eGPU. So make sure you stay tuned for those videos. Now, a lot of people will tell you that, you know, the further away the eGPU is or the, or the further away something is from the CPU, the more latency, the more bandwidth is reduced. Why this is sort of true, this has nothing to do with why the Alienware graphics amp is so much faster than the eGPU. Now, if you have a look at the eGPU cable, which is a proper Thunderbolt 3 cable in spec, it's like one foot. It is so small. That is the spec of Thunderbolt 3 cable. If you go any longer, you're out of spec. Now, longer cable will work it will increase latency uh, throughput maybe a little bit but really this thunderbolt interface was not made for long distance it was made to be directly attached to your computer and don't think you can use just usb-c cables with this no it's not going to work some may work but yeah you really need a thunderbolt 3 cable and you can get longer ones but as i said they may cause more problems they're out of spec they'll have dropouts and stuff like that it works for you, that's fine, but there's a reason why the spec of the Thunderbolt 3 cable is so small. Now, if you have a look at the Alienware's cable, it's friggin' like three meters or something. Look at the difference. It's like night and day. If it was true that the further away from the CPU you were, the more bandwidth is reduced and the more latency was increased, why is the Alienware faster then? It all comes down to bandwidth, okay? So 40 gigabits per second is the maximum of a Thunderbolt 3. Now that's the maximum that interface can carry. That is not what you're actually getting. You're getting around 32 to using four lanes of PCI Express. Then you have display lanes which are separate from the by four lane PCI Express. So you can see already only having 32 gigabits per second and then have an older overhead that's built into Thunderbolt 3 and that's really why it's all to do with overheads the Thunderbolt 3 interface was not made specifically for eGPUs whereas the Alienware graphics amp was it was made for eGPUs a direct connection four lanes on your laptop directly straight into your graphics whereas Thunderbolt 3 was made for everything for these docks you know fast external storage it was made for Ethernet you know all these hubs with you know multiple devices on on them, which is fantastic. It is so great that you can actually do all those things with Thunderbolt 3, but it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of overheads. All those overheads built in, you're reducing the bandwidth even more from the 32 gigabits per second, which is theoretical, which works out to about, you know, 1000 megabytes per lane of PCI Express. Well, it's actually 984, but close enough to one gigabyte, which is around eight gigabits per second for each single lane. Now, 4K displays can take up to 17 gigabits per second, but as I said before, they are actually routed, not through the by four lanes. They are routed through separate display lanes, which is built into the Thunderbolt. And this is the thing too, right? Thunderbolt is a frigging mess. I cannot wait until Intel actually introduce it into the chipset and into the CPUs. Then it's going to be much better. There's going to be much less overhead. And, and once we go to PCI Express 4, there'll be a doubling of the bandwidth of all the lanes. For example, a by four, four lane PCI Express slot will now have the bandwidth of eight lanes of the current PCI Express in PCI Express 3. So I cannot wait for PCI Express 4, whether they'll have to go to Thunderbolt 4 or whether just the bandwidth will just be there for the Thunderbolt 3 devices. Who knows? But once they get rid of all these, you know, Thunderbolt controllers and all this, you have to update the firmware. It's a friggin' nightmare with Thunderbolt 3. Just trust me, uh, on the Mac, it seems to work a lot better than it does on PC. And you, it's just a nightmare. You know, if you've got a Razer and you get the Razer core, it's going to work. If you have a Gigabyte laptop and you get a Gigabyte external GPU, it's going to work easily. It seems to work always on the Mac if you have an AMD card. But from what I've tested... On, you know, over 20 laptops, it is a friggin' nightmare. You have to update the Thunderbolt firmware and then sometimes it works with NVIDIA cards, sometimes it doesn't work with the AMD and vice versa. It's just night 
mare. So implement it into the chipset and yeah, cannot wait. But at the end of the day, that's why Alienware graphics amp is so much faster. It's just a direct port giving you four lanes straight into the GPU, no overheads, just giving you all that bandwidth for that. Whereas the eGPU uses Thunderbolt 3 with all those overheads. And it doesn't matter the length of the cable, how far away from the CPU is and all this sort of stuff because Alienware three meters away and it's still got more bandwidth than a Thunderbolt 3 eGPU. So it's all just down to bandwidth and those overhead built in to Thunderbolt 3. And that's why if you want the easiest eGPU, just plug it in and get the best performance. The Alienware Graphics Amp is hands down the best external graphics amplifier, but it only does one thing. It connects your graphics card to your laptop and it only works with Alienware. Cannot connect, you know, Ethernet, you know, hubs and this sort of stuff. So Thunderbolt 3 does have its advantages, but for external GPUs, no, it's not as good as the Alienware. It's just no contest. So anyway, guys, I will be testing quite a lot of eGPU stuff. I thought I'll just let you know why the Alienware is the fastest graphics amp in the world and why Thunderbolt 3 is a bit of a nightmare at the moment still. And at the end of the day, they're both bottlenecked already. They, you know, take a 10% haircut just because they're using, you know, four lanes versus you should be using at least eight lanes if you're using a graphics card. So there's already that 10% bottleneck there. Then add the overhead to Thunderbolt 3. Then you get another 20% haircut compared to the Alienware where you know there's a big difference between the two uh, i'd like to thank you guys for watching hope this sort of explained to you why the alienware graphics amp is the best graphics amp and why thunderbolt 3 is yeah quite slow compared to that but still i mean it's still a great thing uh, external gpus being able to use an ultra book and then put you know mega graphics on it yeah you don't get the maximum performance out of it but still <laughs> You can play friggin', you know, some killer games and killer settings if you've got an external GPU. So anyway, yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Uh, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.